Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. In this session, we will discuss what is an algorithm. But before we begin, let me tell you guys that we have daily updates on multiple technologies. If you're a tech geek in a continuous hunt for latest technological trends, then consider getting subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's session. First, we will get started with what is an algorithm. Followed by that, we will look into the characteristics of algorithm. Next, we will learn how to write an algorithm. Moving ahead, we will look at algorithm analysis and algorithm complexities. After that, we will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of algorithms. And finally, we will see some differences between algorithms and programming. I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's get started with the first point that is what exactly is an algorithm. So how does algorithm work in real life? So we'll have a use case here. On my screen we have a lady and she is Shreya. Shreya wants to make some tea and for that she is following some steps. So the first step is she'll take a pan and fill it with water and place it on a gas stove. Followed by that the second step is, she'll make sure that the water comes to a nice boil and then she adds some tea leaves and sugar. Followed by step 2, we have step 3 where she'll allow the leaf to be fully expanded and she'll add some milk after that. Next we have the step 4 where she will wait for the tea to come for a good decent boil. Next we have step 5 where she'll turn off the gas and she'll take the pan off from the stove and the tea is ready to get filtered. And lastly, we have the step 6 where she is all set with the teeth. So in computer science, an algorithm is a method or set of rules that we must be following to perform some specific calculations or other problem solving operations. As a result, an algorithm is a collection of rules or instructions that govern how a work needs to be conducted step by step to achieve the desired results. To accomplish a task, we first provide some input and then follow a sequence of steps to acquire the required outcome of the input. So that is the fundamental definition of an algorithm and we also had a use case. And now we will move ahead and understand the characteristics of algorithms. So basically we have six characteristics of algorithm. So the first one is it should be clear and unambiguous. The second one is that it has to be well-defined inputs. And the third one is that it has to be having well-defined outputs as well. The fourth property of an algorithm is its feasibility, followed by that, finiteness and finally we have language independence. Now we will look into each one of the characteristics in detail. So first we have clear and unambiguous. So this statement is the one which states that the algorithm should be straightforward, simple and easily readable. Each one of its steps should be distinct in every way and lead it to a single conclusion. So the next one is, it should be having well-defined inputs. So this means that an algorithm should indicate what output can be expected, as well as the input should be properly well-defined. Now we have the third one. Similarly, we should also have well-defined outputs. So the well-defined output characteristics of an algorithm means that the algorithm must clearly indicate what output can be expected, as well as the output should also be well-defined. Followed by the third characteristic, we have the fourth characteristic that is the finiteness of algorithm. So the finiteness of algorithm says that the algorithm must be finite and it must not result in infinite loops or similar situations. So followed by the fourth one, we have the fifth characteristic that defines about the feasibility of an algorithm. So feasibility of an algorithm states that the algorithm must be really simple, generic and practical. It must be able to be executed with resources available. Now the last characteristic of the algorithm is being independent of the language. So it means that the algorithm should be defined in such a way that it is completely independent of the language. It must be simple instructions that can be implemented using any programming language. So these were the six major characteristics of algorithm. Now let's move ahead and understand how to write an algorithm. Writing an algorithm does not have any hard and fast rules. Next, 
algorithms are never created to support a specific programming language. As we all know, algorithms should be capable enough to support the conditional statements such as if, if else, switch, etc. An algorithm should be capable enough to execute some of the conditional statements such as if, if else, switch, etc. And also it must be capable to execute the iterative statements such as for loop, while loop, do while loop, etc. We usually create algorithms in a step-by-step -step manner. However, this isn't always the case. After the problem domain has been well-defined, algorithm writing is a procedure that is carried out. We build an algorithm to find a solution to a problem. A problem can be resolved in a variety of ways. Let's look at an example of how to write an algorithm. Consider the following scenario. We need to create an algorithm to determine the largest number among the three given numbers, x, y, and z. As a result, the initial solution to the problem can be written in this manner. So we begin with reading all the three numbers and in the second step, we will have a condition that says if x is greater than y, we will proceed to step 4, else we will proceed to step 5. Next in step 4, we establish a condition that if x is greater than z, then x is the largest of the three numbers, otherwise z is the largest. If y is greater than z, z will be the greatest number, otherwise y will be the largest number amongst all the three in step 5 and the procedure will be terminated. Let's have a look at what the next solution has to offer. In this algorithm, we begin by reading all the three variables, then compare all the three numbers in the third step to determine the largest number, which is if x is greater than y, then there is another if else statement that states that if x is greater than y, then x is largest, otherwise z is the largest. Then there's if else statement which says that if y is greater than z, then y is greater. Otherwise, z is the greatest of the three numbers. So this is how we have multiple solutions to the same problem. So after discussing these solutions, we will move ahead and understand algorithm analysis. The algorithm may be studied in two levels. First, before it is made and then after it is created. The two analysis of an algorithm are as follows. The first one is priori analysis and the second one is the post analysis. So first we will talk about the priori analysis. Priori analysis refers to the theoretical analysis of an algorithm performed before its implementation. Before implementing the algorithm, other parameters such as processor speed might be considered, which does not affect the implementation component. Next, we will talk about post analysis. A practical analysis of an algorithm is called as posterior analysis and it utilizes any computer language to build the algorithm. The purpose of this analysis is to determine how much time and space the algorithm takes to operate. Now, after being understood the algorithm analysis, we will be able to comprehend the algorithm complexity. Two methods can be used to assess the algorithm complexity. The first one is time complexity which states that the amount of time required to finish an algorithm's execution is known as its time complexity. Followed by time complexity, the other one is the space complexity, which is calculated by the quantity of space required to solve a problem and produce an output of space complexity of an algorithm. Let's take a closer look at these complexities. Now we will begin with time complexity of an algorithm. The big O notation is used to express an algorithm's time complexity. The asymptomatic notation is used to depict temporal complexity of big O notation. The time complexity is mainly determined by counting the number of steps required to complete the task. Let's take a look at an example to understand this time complexity in a much better way. If we want to find out a multiplication of n numbers, we can do it by executing a loop from 1 to n, then calculating multiplication when the loop ends, then multiplication holds the n numbers multiplication and last we return the calculated multiplication. The loop statement's time complexity will be at least n and when the number of n increases, the time complexity will also increase. While the code's complexity, that is, returns multiplication will remain constant because its value is unaffected by the value of n and it will obtain the result in every single step. Next, 
we will discuss about space complexity which is expressed with big O notation just as time complexity. These four items are stored in space complexity. It initially saves program instructions, then stores constant values, then stores variable values and finally it keeps track of function cells, jumping statements and so on. The sum of auxiliary space and input size is used to calculate space complexity. The extra space or temporary space used by an algorithm is referred to an auxiliary space. After learning about algorithm complexity, we will look at some of the algorithm's pros and cons. So let's start with the advantages of algorithms. Firstly, algorithms are easy to understand. Next, algorithms are step-by-step -step representation of a solution. And lastly, the problem is broken down into smaller bits or steps in an algorithm, making it easier for the programmer. Now, an algorithm also have various drawbacks, one of which being it takes long time to write, hence it is time consuming. Second con of the algorithm is, algorithms make it harder to demonstrate branching and looping statements. So followed by the advantages and disadvantages of algorithms, we now enter into the final segment where we discuss the differences between algorithms and programming. So the first difference is that an algorithm is a type of programming. On the other hand, a program is more directly associated with the computer performing one or more tasks, but an algorithm is more of a notation, a technique for solving a problem. Now, let us discuss the second difference. An algorithm can be decoded or run by a human, whereas the program is only run or decoded by a set of compilers of the computer. Now, the third difference. Basically, an algorithm is a design of the solution to the problem. Here, we can only analyze the solution, but we can never run it. But whereas on the other hand, programming is completely a different ball game. Here, you can directly implement a certain phase or an entire program and test the programs and get an output. So the fourth and the last difference between an algorithm and programming is, an algorithm is written using natural human vocabulary. Whereas, programs are written using any programming language such as C, C++, Java, Python, etc. Now with that, we have come to an end of this tutorial on what is an algorithm. If you have any queries regarding the topics covered in this session, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.